What do you mean you can have a bank without bankers? What do you mean you can have, <laughs> you know, you can have an exchange without people? What, you know, you know, to them, this is alien concept because it is really the antithesis of the existing system. So they've never been comfortable. And then they use the ridiculous KYC AML thing, which really all KYC AML is to increase tax takes. So everyone has to declare everything. That's really what that's about. It wasn't really about terrorism financing and stuff like that. It's really about they need to know where your money is at all times so you can't leave the system. And I think that's purposefully done. I think it's to create speed bumps. You know, the SEC kind of n often knows it's going to lose, but it does it to slow the whole industry down. The regulatory crackdown on cryptocurrency firms persists in the United States, posing significant threats to the industry's growth and development. Agencies such as the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission show no signs of relenting, as evidenced by recent actions against Uniswap Labs, the creator of Ethereum's largest decentralized trading platform. Uniswap received a Wells notice from the SEC, indicating potential enforcement action for operating as an unregistered exchange and broker-dealer. This move reflects a broader trend of regulatory pressure on crypto-related firms, with Coinbase, Kraken, and others facing similar notices in recent months. Uniswap's response suggests a mounting resistance within the industry, exemplified by founder Hayden Adams' readiness to contest the SEC's actions, even potentially in the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, Ethereum developer Consensus has also taken legal action against the SEC, disputing the regulator's attempts to classify Ether as a security. Amidst these developments, Raul Pal, CEO of Real Vision, offers insights into the regulatory landscape, suggesting that the U.S. government's stringent approach aims to maintain control over investors' funds and retain dominance in the financial system, even at the risk of driving developers away from the country. Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself first ahead of the crowd. We have created the ultimate step-by-step -step crypto cheat guide that will guide you this bull run. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Now, by clicking on the link below to get your exclusive copy just under $10. You can see, you know, the almost every other central bank in the world of, of certain size is working on CBDCs. The US mm. won't because it's terrified of making the move. And the US has a history of this. And I wrote some threads about this in the past. So after the US left the gold standard, right, everybody now needed to exchange currencies with each other. And the US was like, well, we don't really want to be involved in this because they were worried about what was going to happen to the dollar. So mm. the UK started the foreign exchange markets. And it became the biggest market the world has ever seen. And the UK dominated that market ever since. Second was the second one was the offshore lending in dollars. So the US was really worried about dollar circulation outside of the US. Didn't know what how to deal with it. Same thing with a reserve currency we're on to this up. So they just basically restricted um, US bank lending to various entities. So the UK started the euro dollar market, which is the offshore dollar market, and it siphoned through other global banks. It became the largest market the world has ever seen. The US missed all of those. So that's why LIBOR, the London Interbank Offered Rate, is the interest rate for the entire world, or was until they've just changed it to SOFA. Then it happened again in the very late 80s, where the derivative market in the US was basically the Sh Chicago Mercantile Exchange and the Chicago Board of Trade. But then the swaps market was developed, and it was an OTC market, and it required bank regulatory capital. The US regulators, to protect their own exchanges, said, you're going to we're going to make it so hard for you to do that you're not able to. So the UK started the swaps market, which then became the whole derivative, OTC derivative market, which based out of the UK, which became a $1.4 quadrillion market. So the US has a history of doing this in its fear of screwing up. I get it. You're the incumbent. You've got a fear factor. The UK has a innate ability to arbitrage that. So they see the opportunity. That's why the city of London is so big. The UK stock market's small. It's because they took all of the business from the US. And what was very interesting is they see the US fumbling the ball yet again with crypto. And the UK stood up and said, we want to regulate this properly. We want to bring it here to the city. And we want to turn this into a huge market. And they've done this. This, this would be the fourth time.
And, you know, I, I remember speaking to the guys at Coinbase about this. I think it was Brett um, who runs their institutional side. I'm like, he grew up like me in the traditional finance industry. Back in the 90s, all of the main offices of all of the US banks was London. Hmm. Goldman's biggest office, London. JP Morgan's biggest office, London. Morgan Stanley's biggest office, London. All of them because of this. And slowly after Basel III regulations came in in the early 2000s, capital went back to the US because the US didn't um, put such string stringent um, things onto the balance sheets of the banks. So money flew, flowed back. So it just feels that the opportunity here is this whole thing to happen all over again. A key concern raised in the consensus lawsuit is the SEC's alleged power grab over Ethereum. The development company aims to challenge the regulator's perceived overreach by contesting its attempt to classify ETH as a security. Despite Ethereum lacking the characteristics of a security in previous statements from the SEC affirming this stance, the complaint filed in a Texas court highlights the cryptocurrency industry's collective resistance to the SEC's aggressive regulatory approach. Former Consensus employee Lex Sulin emphasized the importance of Web3 companies joining forces to combat regulatory overreach in the United States. In an interview with Coindesk, Sulin noted Consensus participation in a broader industry effort opposing enforcement-driven regulation detrimental to the Internet's future. As the debate unfolds, Raul Pal's insights into the SEC's motives and its persistent crackdown on the cryptocurrency industry offer further context. When you're in a monopolistic power situation, look at Google's inability. And I know the Google Web3 team well. They understand it. Yes, they do. They think it's great. But even the CTO of Google, as far as I'm aware, is a huge Web3 fan. Huh. But they can't do anything because it's going to disrupt their own business. The You're US is the incumbent it. monopoly of money, mm. global money, and it's fearful of changing its system in case it loses control of the system. So this is why they've kind of, if you think about it on this kind of spectrum, Coinbase good, Binance bad. Yeah. Right? Because <laughs> right. Coinbase is within the walls. They've now given, they've blessed them with a monopoly, basically, and shut out Binance, which is the world's largest exchange, which is probably Chinese controlled uh, in as much as Coinbase is, is US controlled. And therein lies the separation, much like Chinese tech firms, US tech firms. This, so this game is being played out literally everywhere we see. Even the ETF for them is quite funny because the ETF they think of is keeping the money within the system. Hmm. Right, so it has to go through the intermediaries and the middlemen and all the checks and balances that they've got so they know where it goes. I actually think of it differently. I think it's a Trojan horse of crypto land put into <laughs> fiat world. Because what you do is you give people a taste of what this is. Mm. And they will move out the risk curve. They always do. And they'll come into crypto land. So I think the SEC and the US government think that it's a victory to channel assets through the uh, ETF, I think it's a victory for crypto land as a Trojan horse. Do you think that these types of handbrakes that US regulators are pulling right now, will that slow us down at all? No. Firstly, obviously, it's a global marketplace. Secondly, Bitcoin's got the seal of approval. ETH will get the seal of approval at some point. What you've now created is capital inflows. Now, this is not direct investment because it doesn't go directly into crypto land. It's like a trade deal. That money gets recycled in the crypto economy and out the risk curve. Profits get recycled into VC. VC creates new products, which create the new opportunities for the next cycle. So <clears throat> I don't think it slows it down because that still continues. You know, mum and pop in Ohio are not going to be using Uniswap to trade you know, some hundredth token. So I don't think it really matters. The issue actually is, as you alluded to, is I just feel sorry for US innovators. Right. I mean, that's the, that's the issue and that they're, they're having to move. You know, I'm <laughs> off to token 2049 uh, in Dubai shortly. Dubai is attracting a ton of talent. Singapore, hmm. slow down a bit. Hong Kong, getting talent back again. Uh, Europe are getting talent, bizarrely. Switzerland's got some great talent going on there in um, in um, Crypto Valley. UK's getting talent and others are moving offshore elsewhere. So it's a shame. 
While U.S. regulators and politicians like Senator Elizabeth Warren continue their anti-crypto stance, other countries and regions are actively seeking ways to embrace and engage with the cryptocurrency industry. Some nations are leveraging excess energy to mine Bitcoin, positioning themselves for a prominent role in the digital era ahead. However, certain regulators and politicians remain steadfast in their opposition, viewing the cryptocurrency industry's freedom as a threat to their authority and plans for implementing central bank digital currencies. Raul Pal noted in his interview that nothing can impede the inevitable transition from traditional finance to crypto. Do you agree with Powell's assessment of the regulatory landscape in the United States, particularly concerning the cryptocurrency industry? Share your thoughts and observations in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.